Hi, it's Friday, it's three o'clock, and here we are with something for the weekend, brought to you as always by Together 2012. We're a community interest company based in the main London 2012 Paralympic host borough of Newham, and we're creating, with your help, a lasting and concrete, or should I say, artistic cultural legacy for the Games in East London and now, thanks to the magic of the internet around the world as well. I'm Ju Gosling, also known as the artist Ju90. I'm artistic director of Together 2012. With me, where she's been locked up for more months than I can count now, is our chair, the artist and documenter, Julie Newman. We, as always on a Friday, are dressed up to go out to stay in. So we're going to come back to East London in a minute for some proper introductions and audio description. And we'll tell you what we're dressed up to go out to stay in to do. But first, we're going to go over to the other end of our long virtual wheeled sofa to the West Midlands for some introductions, audio description and find out what you're dressing up to go out to stay in to do. So over to the West Midlands. I'll go first today. Mm -hmm. So I am Robin Sergener. I am business director at Together 2012. Up here, um, as Drew said, at the other end of the sofa in Sutton Coldfield. Uh, we are sat in front of our beautiful velvet backdrop. Still here, despite what I said last week. Um, oh, I, like, I think it's, I like to think of you in front of theatre curtains until you put up your white summer backdrop when I like to think of you in a marquee backstage in a festival. Just because these venues are closed in real life, why shouldn't we recreate them here? Well, I will be re relocating in a couple of weeks, so we'll have to work out how that's going to work exactly. But anyway, um, so what do I look like? I have uh, slightly prepared to go out um, to look uh, annoying whitish grey hair. I'm where I have blue eyes behind, no rim, black armed glasses. Uh, actually, not badly shaven, and I am wearing a black round necked t shirt. Um, many of you will have seen this before. Emblazoned in white on the front um, is a picture of a ballot box. It says Black Thursday at the top, which is a name of an album by the Nat band named at the bottom, Angry Fish. Um, shall I tell you why I'm wearing this now? Please do. And okay. I should say, of course, that Angry Fish is your band because well, you're it, so known as Angry Fish. I can't it, imagine why other than the Paralympic swimming records. <laughs> oh, well, when you've got time to know, I'll explain. That's a whole show. Um, so, uh, and I'm wearing this, I mean, particularly because of the ballot box um, image, because this week um, in many, many places in the UK, um, or certainly England, is uh, local and mayoral elections coming up on Thursday. So I'm going to, I'm dressing up to stay in or may even go out to uh, um, put the disability perspective across at some political meetings. That sounds like a really good idea. And I think they're all online now. So we'll expect you to be going viral soon, dropping in on somebody's parish council meeting. And I'm Tracy Surgener, and I, uh, along with Rodin, sit in our studio. Um, what do I look like? What do I look like today? Um, I'm dressed up. So I'll start with what I look like. I have got blonde hair, and I've just grabbed an old bit of um, pipe cleaner to tie it into a ponytail. I have a paintbrush sticking out of the top of my hair. Um I have long blonde hair, which has been tied tied back. Um, I've got pale complexion and blue eyes. As part of my get dressing up to go out, I've also got some splodges of paint dotted around my face. I'm wearing a large over shirt, which is my painting shirt. And I'm holding my homemade palette that we made a few weeks ago. And I am dressed up in this manner because I'm dressed up to stay in to go out to a fine arts exhibition. And I'll tell you more about that later. Brilliant, because, of course, coming up after 3.30, we have our recommendations for the week ahead. Things you can do from home, online and offline and almost entirely free. 
So back to us in East London, I'm Ju Gosling, also known as Ju90. Let's not even go there. I've got a self-styled hennaed corona crop hidden under a black leather cap. I've got pale olive skin, I've got green eyes behind black plastic glasses, black wrist braces, and today I am dressed up along with Julie, who will tell us more in a minute, to go, I'm dressing up to go out to stay in because it's Lesbian Visibility Week. So we have white t-shirts which have got an upside down pinky purple triangle with the wheelchair sign from familiar from so much signage revamped into a rainbow. And I've also got a rainbow waistcoat on. We're really dressed up to go out to stay in. Oh, and for once, instead of our usual together backdrop, we have rainbow flags behind us. And our teddy bear, who is competing to be our medal bearer in the Paralympic Games, which are coming up after... 3.30 as well. We always have our weekly clockwork Paralympics, but even the teddy bear has got a t-shirt on that says lesbian across the front and has a rainbow coloured collar. So Julie, do you want to um, audio describe yourself and perhaps say why you have relabeled this week on social media, Disabled Lesbian Invisibility Week? Hi, I'm Julie. I'm the chair of Together 2012. Uh, I'm currently wearing, I believe it's a purple uh, baseball cap, but the colours seem funny in the light, so that's that's why if it looks strange to you, that's it is actually purple. Uh, I've got long gold and silver hair, which is now over my shoulders and over my collar because it's growing all the time. Uh, I've got my white T-shirt, the Regard T-shirt on, that uh, is similar to Jews. Uh, I've got a, a pale lilac hoodie. Again, it looks grey to me in the monitor, but it is it is pale lilac. Plus, I've got my my bangle, my Celtic bangle, and I've got my my jewels, which are glittery, purple amethysty sort of sparkly jewels. Uh, Disabled Lesbian Invisibility Week came around really as a I was outraged I was so angered um, because at the very beginning everybody on Twitter which is what I was following was so excited because it was lesbian visibility week and I got all excited about it as well and I went through the list of performers and acts and speakers uh, and in fact lesbian visibility day didn't have any disabled lesbians in it at all um, and going through the list, there wasn't anyone obvious, shall we say. It's possible that somebody's got a, a you know, hidden or, you know, not a visible uh, condition or impairment and they are disabled, but it's not obviously so. But there was no mention really of, of inclusion in, in the broadest sense, an inclusion which was intersectional. Uh, and I, I just thought, no, I don't really like this and I'm not going to be made invisible. You know, I've, I've been there too many times, as, as many of us as disabled people have over the years. So hence the hashtag Disabled Lesbian Invisibility Week. So if you'd like to share that hashtag along with us, you would be very welcome. Yeah, I think it it's really unfortunate that in 2021, and particularly when one in three of the disabled lesbian community are disabled themselves, that we're still having these debates. But I had the same thing really with Women's Month last month. I didn't get a single booking. I was doing things all through LGBT plus history month. You know, I was visible as a lesbian there at least, but we just didn't seem to be seen as legitimate women because we're wheelchair users or for whatever other reason, you know, we were just completely invisible in women's month. We're invisible in lesbian disability, yeah, les lesbian visibility week. You, I wouldn't have thought you could miss us. I often think <laughs> that, you know, if I'm trundling along the street in my bright purple wheelchair, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, it's extraordinary how invisible even in 21, we still are. So we're just going to have to get more and more and more visible and hope that works. Mm. 
Moving on, however, we are delighted to have poetry again this week from the Together Pop-Up Poetry Club. The Together Pop-Up Poetry Club meets every Wednesday morning by phone. So what we do is we phone you, we put you on a group call, we pay all of the costs, and the group gets together to read, write, and perform poetry, including writing a poem on a theme each week. Now, we're going to pub tell you, and also on our highlights and links page, which I'll tell you about how to find later, we're going to put up the theme for next week. So if you'd like to join in from home, you don't fancy a telephone group, or you can't access it, then please do send us your poems. We would love to have them as well. So what was this week's theme, Julie? Rainbows. And everybody is quite fitting, actually, if you look at the rainbow flags behind us, when you think about it. Everybody got very engaged with it. I mean, everybody. Uh, people had prepared. Um, people had written poems in advance. Some people finished them off in the day. Some of us, like myself, wrote it on the morning, um, sort of like inspired by the group conversation and uh, and discussions. Could we hear yours first? Mm. Bear with. Okie doke. Okay, uh, this is called The Rainbow. It's Reflections on Refractions, which is me being clever. Uh, the dark of the storm has moved to the horizon and the sun shines through the clouds and rays. As the trees sit heavy with branches hanging low, the birds become busy in the puddles. C captive pools for them to perform their cleansing dance, simply celebrating the cycle of sun and rain. Collectively, the world stops, draws a breath, now free of dust and pollen, clean air, clear air, fresh air. Water and light are the alchemists, mixing like magic the colours that come together, the rainbow is formed as the world has paused and there for all to see the promise of a new tomorrow long held dear in the hearts of humanity. Peace, love and comfort given freely through the kindness of those who care. Coming together of groups, outsiders wanting to call the rainbow their own, those inside calling it theirs. The rainbow lifts the hearts of those trusting that the world will be a better place than before the rain. The promise is there for all to see. The bow between heaven and earth carries a significance now ancient. The birds pay no heed, their flight irreverent in its disregard for human values as they wing their way towards a colourful sky. While the rainbow fades, as it always will, the birds remain in flight. Oh, that was lovely. Thank you, Judy. Incredible. Really, really <laughs> good. I Thank think you. you've got one from Dwayne Bryan, Robin. Oh, me next. Well, it was going to be Tracy. I've got hers already as well. Not to worry. Oh, okay. we, I'm, no, no. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. So, um, again, this is um, entitled The Rainbow by Dwayne Bryan. The rainbow has many colours, but it's very rare. You barely see them once a year. When it shines and glows, glows, you should know, from orange to purple to bloody mauve. People look at rainbows as them symbols of themselves. It makes them happy. It makes them well. I am a rainbow too. I am a rainbow too. I am a rainbow too. But to the, to the rescue, here I am. With the meaning of the rainbow, happiness is the meaning of the rainbow. I rarely see a rainbow, but I know it will appear. When you see the rainbow, somehow you care. Oh, thank you. That was very thoughtful, Dwayne. It's obviously provoked an awful lot of thought in people. This is Crystal Pease's just called Rainbow. And she says, I have rainbow trainers. They are all different colours. Everybody likes my shoes. Everyone likes my shoes. Every one of my carers wants my shoes. Rainbows are bright colours, purple, red, green, blue, orange and yellow. Also, I have rainbow stamps. They're very pretty and you use rainbow stamps like stickers. 
The rainbow stamps are very interesting. They can be a work of art. Thank you for that, Crystal. And in the old days when we met in person rather than online, I was always a huge fan of Crystal's shoes. She is quite right. She has, I think it's partly living in Tower Hamlets near some very, very good markets, but Crystal has one of the best shoe collections I have ever seen. <laughs> So um, I think if we go back to Tracy now, you have one from Dawn Barber. I do. This is Dawn's poem, The Rainbow. The rainbow up high in the sky gives us hope and joy to follow our dreams. It colours our hearts. It flows in, in us like a river down a stream. When times are bad, it looks after us in, in every way. So when you see a rainbow, look up and smile today. Oh, that's really cheered me really up. Nice. Thank you, Dawn. That's lovely. And I think we've finally for today, but we have more poems from Blake Jarrett Gibbons and Glory Sengo, which I will also put up on the website. But this is from Alison Marchant. She works for us part time as our club's programme leader. And Alison has a has developed a way of writing because everybody's so different where she takes lines from other people's work and puts them together and I think it works really nicely and indeed if you want to look at experimenting with poetry it's quite a good technique to use. Uh, spectrum of colours. A rainbow is a meteorological phenomenon caused by reflection, refraction and dispersion of light in water droplets. A spectrum of light appearing in the sky, a multicoloured circular arc. Rainbows are caused by sunlight and always appear in the section of sky directly opposite the sun. Rainbows can be full circles. The observer normally sees only an arc formed by illuminated droplets above the ground centred on a line from the sun to the observer's eye. A rainbow is not located at a specific distance from the observer, but comes from an optical illusion. Rainbows span a continuous spectrum of colours. Thank you, and thank you for that, Alison. So we're going to move on and look at some of the other work that the art clubs have produced this week. And if you're interested in our club's program, it's open to any, dis <clears throat> any disabled person and anybody you want to have with you at home. We have Art Club on Zoom on Tuesday and Friday. We have the Poetry Club, like I say, by phone on a Wednesday. We have a Photographers and Filmmakers Club on the second Monday and a Dance on Screen Club on the fourth Monday. You can find out about all of these by emailing us at info at together2012.org.uk or checking out our website www.together2012.org.uk and I'll put that address up on the bottom later. We're going to start by looking at what people were doing this morning where we have a still life session and I'm just going to pop the still life picture up and ask Robin to audio describe it. Okay. Uh, well, this makes me think um, wedding actually, so I'll go to it. So um, it's a white background, a very neutral background um, and at the front of the screen, or well, closest to is is a pair of uh, very pointed ladies' high heeled shoes. I'd almost go to say as much as pointed as winkle pickers. Very pointed. Where you put your toes, I don't know. They are gold, um, a gold, and then there is a um, a, a black um, kind of paisley shape, twisty, turny um, beads decorating the front in swirls and and with sort of little diamante type uh crystal things in between all the swells that's probably the worst description ever um but that's on a gold base and then the sole which you can see of the the sandal going upwards um is a is a, a really kind of deep bronze color so lovely colors with black straps um they are are placed on a piece of salmon i believe tissue paper um and then sitting behind that is a kind of multi headed 
um, very rusty rose, I guess I would call that. I mean, uh, some kind of um, jewellery, I guess, or decorative jewellery. Do they call it a corsage? Is it something that they might... Well, I, I don't think it's possible to really know, but that's <laughs> a great description. Thank you, Robin. And I'm just going to pop up a few of this morning's artwork. So let me just take this off. So this is Lee Brooker, and Lee has done a beautiful representation mm -hmm. of that in, I think, all coloured pencils. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Very nice. This one is Glory Sengo, and Glory has worked with orange, brown, and yellow felt tips. And again, it got some really nice energy in all of the lines there. And this is Sophia, and Sophia's used felt tip, and I think also she's got some pencil in there, and she's got browns and oranges and blacks. It's just a really, really nice picture. They've obviously had great fun with it. So I've just got time to show one more now. Now. And this is Dwayne Bryan's. A lovely picture. And, uh, Dwayne has painted that and he's really sort of made great use of the tissue paper and made it brighter and it is very, very effective. Well done, Dwayne. So again, if you'd like to join the art club, please let us know on info at together2012.org.uk. If you don't have the data to stay online for an hour or really it just doesn't meet your access needs, we can also text or email you the photo on the Friday morning if you'd rather work from home. In which case, as always, we would still love to see your work here. So we're going to move on now with some of our own join in from home activities and over to you, Tracy, I'm going to put your first picture up. Thank you. Well, I got a bit inspired actually after seeing um, the painting last week, um, where the, the dripping painting from the pencils that the the no the crayons had melted. I thought that's really lovely. I'm going to give that sort of thing a go. So again, I just looked at what I'd got in the house. Um, I'm using a lid um, from a chocolate box. I thought I'd get creative and use a fork. And um, I've got a selection of um, acrylic paints. So I just, in fact, I quite like it as it is, but I just um, arranged a few different colours. I've got a blue in the middle, a white underneath, a red on the top, um, a tiny bit of green. I was playing with different amounts. Um, an orange and sort of a goldy colour I've put in the middle of the blue. And I thought, you know, play with it a little bit. And then I, I literally just used a fork. I thought, you know, what am I going to do with this? And I used a fork to create um, the pattern that I ended up with and um, managed to leave it with some depth. Um, you know, I, I've got no idea of what I wanted it to be. I just, it was a bit of freehand freehand art and uh yeah i was just thinking that it says something to me you know it's warm it's come out it looks a lot of lots of reds bits of blue and green popping up some white swirls but it's the depth that um i really liked i sort of thought yeah i like that it's quite impressive yeah myself. it's amazing how you, right from the first one you can kind of start seeing pictures in them even though they were possibly none intended i'm just going to bring the next image up now and this is actually the other half of the box um and i thought okay let's uh, let's try and get a scene going here let's create a scene um so i've used some blue some green and some black and a bit of white for my colours and for the instruments I've used um, a meat tenderizer, <laughs> um, a pastry brush and a spoon. Um, so basically I've used the, uh, I've gone quite thick with the blue and tried to create some waves, some deep, deep waves with a little, little touches of white. Um, I'll just bring up the final piece. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's lovely, thank you, Joe. So yeah, you can see on the the larger picture, you can see where the white has gone into the my idea of the sea, um, and then we've got like a what I'm calling a beluga whale, just sort of lifting itself out of the water and about to nigh 
uh, nose dive back in. Um, in the the background, we've got a bit of a green um, creation, and then we've we've got some white clouds, a bit of white water, and um, that was created with the meat tenderizer. <laughs> and then um, again, we've got black and a bit of white from the meat tenderizer to sort of show um, a collection of birds just flying over. So yeah, I was I was quite impressed with my experiments. I'm not one for painting normally, but I wanted to give it a go. And I was quite pleased with my outcome. I'm not surprised. I thought it worked really well and it's so evocative. And of course it also reminded me of how the brain works, where the brain actually only sees very small amounts and then puts everything else together. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing what you see as soon as you start. I mean, for people like myself who don't have great kind of hand-eye coordination and yeah don't have fine motor control I think it's a really inspiring way I mean I think it's great for everybody but I think it also shows you don't have to be good with a paintbrush mm. to be able to create pictures that are not just abstract but representational I was trying to remember other ways where you can give the paint some some body so that you've actually got the texture and the only thing I could vaguely remember from a dim and distant past was mixing it with something, well, like a flour and water paste, mm. perhaps mm. adding yeah. some pigment into that. But I think if you've got a paint at home that will, like most acrylics, kind of dry with some texture, you're probably better mm. off just using the paint. Um, so we're going to move on to our other join-in from home special activity for this show from Stara Plurger. And it's a good opportunity just to say both Stara and Tracy have their own pages on our website. Underneath the join-in from home programme, you can see join-in with Tracy, join-in with Stara. Stara's has videos and some information as well if you need it, but mostly all you've got to do is watch the video. With Tracy, it's pictures and there's some explanatory text, but again, you should be able to access it, fingers crossed, just through looking at the pictures. So finally, in this half of the show, this is Stara's join in from home activity this week. Oh. Hi, I'm Sarah and I made a painting of a river and flowers. Beautiful. Oh. that was very clever and mm. now I'm wondering how to audio describe it for anybody who couldn't see it but essentially Stara was using poster paint again like last week and I think poster paint is probably one of the ideal paints for having a bit of body in it and she was squashing it to make the background between two pieces of plastic mm. and then cutting out shapes and adding them as always, really imaginative, really effective. I'm going to get some more instructions to add to the website. We have a page called Highlights and Links. You can find it under the main Together 2012 TV page. And Highlights and Links has links to everything we discuss here, even Lesbian Visibility Week. And, um, and all, of course, the pictures that we've seen, the text of the poems, if you've enjoyed them and would like to read them again. And of course, join in, from Trace, join in with Tracy and join in with Sarah. But now I'm going to put a short video on that's going to tell you more about the Join In From Home program that we also have on our website because there's a huge range of activities and this video just tells you about a few of them.
Together 2012 is running a join in from home program from our website together2012.org.uk. Click on the link at the top of the page, join in from home, to go straight to the main page where you have a wide range of accessible, inclusive, creative activities, mostly using things that you would already have at home. At the top of the page and throughout the pages, you will also see videos in British Sign Language to translate the site for deaf people. These videos can also be useful if you have difficulties reading and you simply want to hear more of the content. The Join In From Home programme is based on the activities that we would usually be running in East London. So, for example, we have an art club which usually operates on a Tuesday with craft-based activities and on a Friday morning for drawing and painting. Here you can join in with the Arts Club's Hands Project and celebrate your uniqueness and membership of the human race. There are full instructions on the linked page here. But essentially, we invite you to draw around your hand on a piece of card. It could be an old cereal packet. Cut the shape out, turn it over, and decorate it with anything you would like to do. It could be paints, crayons, glitter, collage, beads, leaves, anything you can think of. Photograph your hand or hands and send it to us at tv at together2012.org.uk. We'll add it to our video installation and share it on social media. Our music club usually meets on the first Friday of each month. We have an open mic session and we invite everybody to play along with percussion instruments. So here you can learn how to make your own percussion instruments from recycled materials. And you can also join in a percussion workshop from last summer in terms of carnival percussion. So these three instruments are used most often in carnival. We have a shaker and a go-go and a hand drum. So this is how to make a recycled shaker, a recycled a go-go, and a recycled hand drum. You can also, if you're technically minded, make your own tactile sound instrument. This does require a few simple electronics, but is a very interesting and exciting project as part of our Vibrofusion ongoing work. You can also listen with Together. We have Spotify playlists created by Robin Surgener, also known as our TV presenter Angry Fish. And we also have two classical music playlists from Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra, including one that's uniquely suited to people who are feeling very unwell. And I should add that since we made that video, there are lots more Spotify playlists up there for you to enjoy, including, I think, at least three from Julie Newman. So now we're going to move on again. It's time for the weekly Clockwork Paralympics, where we choose a competitor each. They stagger along in basically nothing like the Paralympics style at all. And then one of us gets the opportunity to put a medal on our teddy bear who functions as the team's medal bearer for the next week. Our teddy bears are taking part in the international virtual bear hunt. If you're doing a live stream or indeed you just want to stick a teddy bear in the window, bear in mind all the kids out there that are really enjoying hunting for them. So do you want to introduce your teddy bear, Robin? I will. Now you're going to think that I've cheated and I've bought the same teddy bear as um, <laughs> last week because it does look incredibly similar. Um, but uh, this is the teddy representing Turkey. Um, just to prove that I'm not making it up, here is George. <laughs> OK, there is George. Um, and you can tell the difference because they are identical twins from an, brothers from another mother, as they say, as a Turkish flag for a nose. Um, and and this this teddy is called Babak, which actually means little father. And I thought that was rather fitting. 
I think that's really cute. We didn't say you had to have a different teddy each week. I think we just teased you occasionally because the teddy's... Well, we've, I've exhausted all of them now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, ours keep making regular appearances. Lily, the lesbian teddy, I think most recently appeared in LGBT plus history month. So Lily thinks it's really important to be visible whether or not she has got a medal. So we're back in the pool, or I should say my walk-in bar with two clockwork cramps doing a leisurely sprint shall we say to compete to see who is going to get the medal this week if you want to join in from home you need to choose the right side of the screen or the left side of the screen what's it going to be for birmingham 2022 i think we're going to go um, right side of the screen as we look at it and I'll get you to just do a little bit of commentary, although it may be too quick. Right, well, here we go. I'm glad the swimming pool sides aren't quite as high as this bath when it comes to climbing <laughs> out. So let's see what happens. Oh, oh, it's, 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 oh, no. Oh, we've been thwarted by directional coordination issues here. <laughs> I mean, I know that they're para racing, but crikey. Well, anyway. Oh. So, so much for my brothers. They're going to have to go back and train a bit harder, I think. So, congratulations well, to London. They can still be on the show for the bear hunt. So, as always, not being Paralympians, we have just one gold plastic medal in the house given out by the mayor of Newham in London. Yeah, in London in 2012. So, well, at least it's a very relevant medal. And I shall put Lily, the lesbian, back with her medal where she can... The winner, the winning bear. The winning bear, yes. <laughs> she always likes that, so that's going to be cheering her up. Yes. But I'm sure Robin doesn't take it that seriously because really, who would? Well, oh, that would be <laughs> Julian Robin, I think. <laughs> Thank goodness for me and Tracy, we're more into the teddy bears themselves. So now we're going to look at the week ahead and have some recommendations, things we think look interesting to do from home, online or offline, and almost entirely free. Do you want to give us something to start with, Tracy? Yeah, I don't mind. I've got, um, I just want to quickly flag up that I'm still watching the uh, All That Glitters um, jewellery making, which of course is coming from Birmingham's jewellery quarter. It's getting more and more exciting every week. So I'm keep, yeah. keep watching that. I want um, to say, having in the same way that I've now got into BBC Six, thanks to Robin's recommendation, I too watched all the glitters mm. and loved it. Yes, so, um, brilliant. Yeah, really, really recommending that. And I think you also maybe last week referred to Glow Up, which is the makeup mm. show. And not only have I watched the first two episodes, I'm now halfway through the previous series because I <laughs> so much. So, um, yeah. yeah, I didn't think I would, but because you recommended it, I thought I'd give it a go and yeah. really enjoyed it. Yeah. What have you got to recommend, Julie? Well, I went on to the list again because I quite like that for inspiration. And I found and that's a website. It's, it? I was going to say, yes, it's, it's, a, um, it's a listing service. It, it, it lists... Uh, free and some paid for online events and and activities i picked up the tour of the british museum which i hadn't seen before so i'm really really interested in it i want to see the prints and the paintings but there's all sorts of different rooms on that site um and it's fascinating if you've got an interest in history at all or colonialism in fact um, you know, there's, there's, there's lots to see, really. Thank you for that, Julie. So my first one is to say that it's International Jazz Day today, which I didn't even know existed, but it was declared by the UN in 2011 to highlight jazz and its diplomatic role of uniting people in all corners of the globe. And I loved that. And I I'd been thinking earlier in the week, I haven't listened to any jazz for ages and have I maybe given it as much 
of a listen as I should have done. And that's really inspired me to think of it as that kind of music form. So the Cheltenham Jazz Festival has a free online concert on Sunday at half past seven with Zoe and Idris Rahman. And all of that in terms of links and more detailed information will be on the highlights and links page. So, yeah, International Jazz Day. Brilliant. So, Robin. OK, uh, first one from me um, is uh, back to BBC iPlayer. Um, and it is uh, a, a series of six shows entitled Crip Tales. Now, I've chosen these. These actually came out, I think, at the end of last year. Um, but the reason I thought this week, if you haven't seen them all, would be a good catch up is that the um, the show, which is uh, kind of mainly written and produced by Matt Fraser, who is um, a, a, a well-known British come international um, performer, writer, mm. musician, uh, body sculptist. I don't know. He does this. He kind of does everything. You know, he's a kind of really groovy guy. Um uh, yeah, but he's the, he executive produced the series, and it was and it's been nominated for a BAFTA, mm. um, which is you know uh, a really really prestigious thing. And I uh, and particularly when it came out, it didn't kind of get the numbers of viewers mm. be, just because it was it was on BBC Four originally, um, you know, and and there were other things that were about it was it, for example it was up against um, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Mm. So um, so to kind of come from perhaps being a little bit invisible um to to actually getting a BAFTA nomination is absolutely incredible and basically it's it's, it's six individual monologues um telling kind of uh, a, a a brief story of a, of a kind of pivotal moment in that person's life um and and they're actually yeah I think I think that's absolutely right I was so pleased to see it with the BAFTA just a very slight trigger warning for the episode with Liz Carr. There was a lot of distress, I know, amongst people who, you know, identify as having hidden conditions. And they did actually find that particular one very offensive. So, yeah, just bear it in mind that if you're watching it uncritically, just think about how it might have felt if you were somebody who has been accused of, you know, exaggerating your impairment or not really being disabled, but it's an excellent, excellent series. The next thing I wanted to flag up is next week is Deaf Awareness Week. And if you didn't know that, well, that's why we need Deaf Awareness Week. And the focus for this year is coming through it together. And I thought that was really the perfect, perfect kind of thing for this year in particular. So there's lots of things happening as part of Deaf Awareness Week. But the thing I wanted to pick out is a Hackney Libraries lockdown poetry group next Thursday from 6 to 7.30 because they have the deaf spoken word poet Raymond Antropus performing. And I haven't heard Raymond, but I've heard lots about him. So I'm... Well, I would be really looking forward to that were it not for the fact, and I'll just flag up my final one now as well, that from 7 to 8, we have our monthly Zoom together next Thursday. That's open mic, poetry and music, clubs participants and any other disabled people are very welcome. If you'd like the Zoom link, again, info at together2012.org.uk and I'll pop that up. It's a very supportive space. So if you've never read a poem or performed aloud before, then do come along. You would find it a really good starting off point. So I think I'll go back to the West Midlands for the next recommendation. Yeah, I've got um, another recommendation and hence my attire for today. Is um, It's an uh, an arts fair that I found. It's called Affordable Arts Fair. Now, what you think is affordable and what isn't, that's that's not why I looked at it. Um, I just, it is free, it's online, um, and it just, it just, it, it exposed me, I suppose, to lo so many different types of art, sculpture, paintings, fine art, um, and it gave me a few ideas as well, because art, painting was never one of my things um and what i really liked about this is that you could click on one picture that you particularly liked um make it bigger have a good look at how you know the structure how it's been put together 
but then underneath it there's more like this so not only have you got the all of the art that's in that room but then you can also go into if you find a picture you particularly like go into that and then look at other pictures in that same style i find that really um really good and really interesting to look at yeah that sounds like a very accessible way to program a site and something mm. that takes much longer so again probably one of the benefits of things being taken online what else mm. do you have for us rob boone oh uh, yeah just one more for me and i think um it, it's a bit of a strange week with the bank holiday on monday and stuff um so i've, I've gone for something that is online um <clears throat> and online all the time it's the paralympic and para sports news um, you know, we've just had our own little Paralympic event. Um, and, you know, for us, you know, as, as, as disabled people, disabled sports people, um, myself, um, you know, we are very much hoping that the Tokyo Paralympics is going to happen mm -hmm. this summer. Um, and of course, there is the Beijing 2022 after that, and then Paris 2024. So, you know, they're not going away, even if the worst happens this year. But what I think that the website is really interesting because it's got lots of articles up there um, that are not just, oh, this is coming. They're not just events listings. They're kind of, there are interviews with art, with, with I was going to say artists, <laughs> um, but they might be, um, with athletes, um, looking at team structures, looking at some kind of competitive, lo lots of different things in there. But there's also is like some quite really good human interesty stuff as well without it being kind of, um yucky um so for example you know there's there's an article that's up this week about um um the world record world record holding uh french jumper um who who only you know she's she's a woman one-legged woman and a mother and it's kind of her article about how she actually puts all three of those jobs as it were um and not that being a woman is a job but um but being a mother <laughs> <laughs> being a mother and an athlete um and in in a world which is still you know in many places as uh you know, women have to fight more to get noticed yes thank you for could have, could have made that a little bit more concise but i think it's really important that all of us support our paralympians this year and next year whether or not the summer and winter games take place if they don't they'll need our support even more but also to look at them as role models and not just mm. for younger people you know many athletes move through sports and if you look at the people mm. shooting they tend to be rather older shall we say mm. so if you're thinking I quite like to take up a Paralympic sport and I definitely fancy shooting at a target at the moment. So, um, yeah, don't just bear it in mind as a passive spectator. Think about having a go yourself. But we're rapidly approaching the final item for today. So before that, I would just like to say thank you very much for joining us. Thank you to our funders, the National Lottery Community Fund and Arts Council England. Thank you to my co-hosts for putting up with me and everything that we do. And thank you to everybody who supports Together 2012, joins in our clubs, comes to our activities. Or indeed, as we've got Cheryl today, is captioning behind the scenes with global real-time captioning. The highlights and links page should be up around six o'clock tonight. We put an edited version of this show up by eight that has got the corrected captions file added in you will be able to see the youtube recording before then but it won't have proper captions so we recommend if you missed the beginning or you want to recommend the show to a friend wait till eight o'clock but otherwise i think the final item when i put the video on has got its own introduction is that it right? has indeed yep so, so goodbye. i will say goodbye from east london and let the west midlands have the last word yeah have a great weekend yeah enjoy and we'll see you next week hi this is robin surgeon interviewing Kuli coley about her new poetry collection for Together 2012 TV. So Cully, um, please could you give us a brief introduction to who Cully Coley is? Oh, well, I am a Wolverhampton-based poet. I'm a mother 
our three children are working in the council full time for the last 32 years. And I've had much in the past, last year I had a, my story told by the BBC News online and, be, and I was featured on the BBC One Sunday morning live, which was amazing for me. <laughs> so, and I've had two books, this book from the first poetry book that I got published by Office Press. And and then I just I just carried on with my writing in between my work, in between my life, in between everything. I, I didn't stop writing. So absolutely brilliant. I mean, and and as I said at the beginning, you you've just released a new poetry collection. So can you tell us what it's called? Um, and actually, why you chose that name? Well, as you, as you, as you so as Robin said, it was called A Wonder Woman. And A Wonder Woman is basically what people think of me as, as a poet rather than a, you know, a real physical Wonder Woman. I'm not physical Wonder Woman. I'm a, you know, I've got lots of words flying around my head and I, and I like poetry, and that, that's what makes me the Wonder Woman. I do remember you dressing as Wonder Woman, actually. Yes. For our... I love, I loved the, the show. I loved her, but I could never compare myself with her, and now I can. <laughs> so, um, kind of, what got you into writing, and more latterly, I guess, performing your poetry? Um, when I was a child, I loved listening to poetry. The teachers used to, used to tell me stories in poetry and they used to, you know, uh, I recite poetry and I, I really I could remember it. So it was like some, something that I could remember. So, and it was positive stuff. So it was really nice. And then I started writing poetry myself as soon as I started using a typewriter because that was my way out. I couldn't, my handwriting was terrible and I couldn't read my own writing, so oh, that was not no good really. So when I got the typewriter, everything flowed at me. And, and when did you move on to performing poetry? Well, a few years ago, I could not do performance. I was so scared of it. I, th I, th I, was, I used to think people are going to laugh at me or I'll fall down on the stage. Uh, you know, I could not. There's no confidence there. But I think, Robin, you, you made the first performance for me to make me to do that story in one of your shows. Yes, and that's when I started my journey of performance poetry. And, and it's and it's been a meteoric rise. I'm I'm so impressed. I mean, you've travelled loads of places. So, at the nub of all of this, what what inspires you to write? I, I think my my main inspiration was to make people aware that what I was thinking and I was not like I was I was not a person with cerebral palsy and just dumb like I couldn't do anything but the inspiration was I I really wanted to show people that I could write and I could you know articulate a bit thing that I couldn't speak. And I think that's really important, actually, um, you know, that that you're showing that just, you know, those, those words don't have to be locked inside your head just because they can't necessarily come out of your mouth. Um, and then, so, what do you like to write about? Well, 
I like writing about, of course, my own experiences as, as a disabled woman and what, what, what fun and games that involves. And with the family and nature, I love bird watching. I love, you know, anything that, um, that's, I can visually see. And also, I like spiritual writing, and and I enjoy writing about love. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. As ever, time is short. I would really love you to perform a couple of pieces of your own poetry. So what I'm going to do is say thank you for now and leave you to introduce the poems as you read them. Thank you. And so the first one I'm going to read, they're both from Wonder Woman, and I'm going to read, first is a short poem called Born Drunk. As I walked down the street, old Asian women began to think. They stared at me head to feet. She's had too much to drink. Babbling nonsense, I wasn't torn. Yes, I said, God sent me tipsy drunk, a party before I was born. Desperate for oxygen, but drank whiskey. <laughs> well, the next one I'm going to read is called Glued, and that's a pandemic poem about my experiences as in the pandemic. It's glued. My life has stopped. I'm seizing up. I am glued to my garden like bees to a flower. I'm glued to this table like chewing gum. I'm stuck to this computer like gel and hairspray. I am glued to the television. My eyes are tied up in knots. I'm glued to the sofa with my library of books. I need help for my walking stick. My knees, back, joints like rust. I'm tied to the kitchen sink, cooking, cleaning, repeating. I'm glued to the changing moods of my family members. I'm glued inside my bottle bubble, waiting for this pandemic to end. And have you got have you got one more short one something really nice and uplifting just to close with okay last one i'm gonna read is called natural promise wash me dry me pair me curl me cut me steam me straighten me color me and treat me rough grow me comb me suck me braid me gel me bleach me spray me style me pay pluck me and tie me up Bad days, good days, conditional days, messed up to perfection in all those ways. I shall give you beauty and keep you head protected until I can go no more. I promise. Sincerely yours, hair. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so <laughs> much, Kelly. Okay, thank you very much.